Hey everyone, and welcome back to the Straight Up Texas podcast. I'm your host, Hannah Wing, and I am so excited to be back for another episode with my podcast, Partners in Crime, the first half of The Low Bros, Nathaniel Low, Rangers First Baseman, and the king of press box frozen grapes and Rangers radio broadcaster, Jared Sandler. Now today is an extra special day because we finally get to welcome our very first special guest, Marcus Simeon. You have been on a tear this year, and you're currently leading AL Second Baseman in the All-Star voting. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. <laughs> uh, what did you have to do to convince him to do this, Nathaniel? All I did was ask nicely. Oh, yeah. really? Oh, yeah, all wow. I did was ask nicely. Yeah, That's Marcus likes podcasts. Yeah, we talk about all the smoke and a couple other podcasts. The Kelsey Brothers, like, yeah, it's it's a good time. So yeah, if we can expand and you know get our first guest on here, he wasn't yeah. really a hard ask, but yeah, it's nice to get the ball rolling. All Happy the smoke to have is your, you. all the smoke's your favorite. Podcast? That's top That's three for me. pretty much the only one I listen to. Okay. Um, you know, I was a Warrior fan growing up. Yeah. And the two hosts were former Warriors, and they're proud. They're the We Believe team that yeah. was, t- you know, 2008, I believe. Yeah, you don't have to bring that up. I'm a Mavs fan, dude. <laughs> <laughs> tough. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the first round. Yeah. Defeat that was, eight that was versus tough. one was, you know, that, that was those guys. And, you know, they retired, and, you know, th- that show is probably one of the best in the business. That was your freshman year of college or right before? Freshman, sophomore. Okay. Right. All right. There, yeah. Do what we've never really, we're going to get into basketball in a little bit, but what's your, are you a basketball fan? No. Not, okay. <laughs> no, I, I mean, don't get me wrong. Like I, I'll play, pick up basketball, like I, but I'm not good. I'm not a good shooter. I don't have great touch. My ball handling skills <laughs> aren't, aren't where they need to be to say that I'm a competitive basketball player. But yeah, as far as when you put a group of like, baseball players together and play some pretty mediocre pickup basketball. Like I love it. Yeah. Who are I the best it. and worst on the team? The best and worst Hoopers on the team. I don't, we haven't really, we haven't played. I mean, we're not supposed to play. I right. Think if somebody were to get hurt, like, yeah, I wouldn't go. See why well. a basketball player, but he wouldn't appreciate yeah. it. No way. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That happened so, to Aaron Boone years ago. That didn't go so well. Right. We have a mini hoop. Like there's a mini hoop in the training room and they'll kind of like make a point to get a tournament going here and there. We'll have a free throw shooting contest, but yeah, anytime it gets competitive and you're playing defense, like that's pretty much off limits. Yeah. I feel like Heaney played back in the day. Like he could, he maybe has some game. Uh, Heaney definitely loves the NBA. Yeah. Oh yeah he's a huge NBA fan. He I know says that he, he played. Um, I don't know. We got to f- ask around. I yeah. I, I feel, feel like Evaldi's probably in that category. Like, just put him in the athlete category, you know? Corey oh. said he was, like, a role player. He played in high school. He was, like, a role player. So he couldn't shoot? Yeah. I, I guess so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I feel like Jankowski could just do some. I mean, even if you're just throwing, like, lobs to him, like, just alley-oops. Just athleticism yeah. in there, man. Yeah. Eli White is who we need back. Yeah. The hops. Oh he could gosh, jump out yeah. of the gym. Yeah, I want to know, who blocked to play ping pong with Eva Longoria last week? Uh, that happened? Did she play? Did yeah, she, play she was in the clubhouse before oh her first gosh. pitch. Um, Probably a pitcher. Oh, yeah. I wish I could have played ping pong be, with her. Because that would have been, <laughs> yeah, been while we were at batting practice. I didn't even know she was in the building until somebody said something like 45 minutes before the game. So you caught Jason Robertson's first pitch because cool. you're a big Stars fan. That was uh, awesome. Yes. Mitch caught Eva Longoria's. Was there like a fight for that or was he... Uh, <laughs> I, I think don't know. usually the coaches catch like, yeah. rags and bees. Yeah, they got pushed aside they for Eva Longoria, though. So yeah. I don't know how that happened. Okay. Yeah, I Good made for a, Mitch. I Love that for him. Yeah, I made a point to push Ragsdale out of the way to catch a hockey player. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know what transpired before somebody catching an actress first pitch, but, yeah, I mean, there's definitely a couple guys that would have volunteered. Yeah, I'm like, sure. Just out of principle. <laughs> um, all right, so we are going to get to basketball and want to get to – y'all stories and stuff like that. But first, as we always do, just kind of a, a state of the team. Uh, and I think this is the first time that we are doing this where the team is in a, a little bit of a stretch uh, in which there's the natural struggle, right? Uh, but 66 games in and the team's got the best record in franchise history through this point. So I, I, I feel like I need to bring that up because there are a lot of fans. It's like, what have you done the last five days? And they forget about the big picture. Uh, I love you guys. I don't know that this was going to be a 130 win team, right? You know, that's just may, maybe, I don't know. Maybe you guys are about to go on a 40 game winning streak, but, <laughs> but this is going to happen. And I think I've always heard that what is going on right now is good. Like you need these moments to help grow. And that when you have stretches where you lose, you know, you get swept in a series or you lose five of six or whatever it might be. 
it's not that you had these extra experiences, these stretches, it's how you respond. So what is it like from y'all's perspective right now with the amazing start this team had now having a little bit of a road bump? Well, I think every game we've lost in the last, you know, six day six games have been games we could have won and games we're in. And you look at the entire season, it's been that's been the case. Um, you know, Tampa game one, they kind of jumped out, got us. Um, the last four games we lost, you know, we've had a chance to win the ball game. Um, we ran into, you know, a hot team so far in Anaheim, L.A. that, you know, long games that could have went either way. I think that there's some defensive plays we could have made better. There's some times we could have got runners in, which we've done the whole year. Yeah. We've done more than most teams usually do. So when it doesn't happen, it's like, what's what's wrong with the Rangers? It's, <laughs> it's the ebbs and flows. It's, it's the target on our back now. It's the... You know, the other team executing pitches, whatever the case may be, didn't happen. Is that good for us to lose? No, we never want to lose, but is it going to happen? Yes. As a team, after a loss like last night, how do you come together and make sure that you turn things around for tonight? Well, same same as always, just prepare. I think preparing is always the key to every single game. Once you get out on the field, let your natural ability take care of that. Um but that's one thing we've always done well as a team is prepare and know our opponent and know what we need to do to play well. And it's a major league game. It's hard. It's hard to win a major league game. That's what I always say. So this team went over a month without losing back to back games. That's incredibly difficult. I don't care how good you are. What is it about the personality or the team in the clubhouse that has allowed you guys to respond so well when you lose a game or when there is a, a you know, a stretch that isn't what you wanted. Well, I, I think culture wise, like it, it's kind of happening organically, right? We just have the right pieces in the clubhouse. And, you know, I, I've gotten a couple comments actually from players on this Angels team, right? That has said like, man, you guys don't have anybody that like sticks out like a sore thumb because some teams will have guys like that. And, you know, attitude's one thing, but you kind of flush it and that's how it goes. But culturally, we've done such a good job of getting good players and good personalities together that it's easy for guys to come back to the yard and regroup and get ready for another one, which is, you know, all we can do. The only thing we can do today is win the first pitch and win one pitch at a time and not look at the previous record or the, the upcoming record, and that's what we're going to do. I think that's what see why in the offseason everybody talked about the people we brought in to um, talked about the personalities, the people, the the man that that we are, and Nate just said it. You know, when we when you go through a stretch like we're going through, you see how people respond. You see how people continue to work. You know, that's that was what Cy was trying to do, um, and he knows that because he's been in clubhouses, which we talk about a lot. It's it's definitely a luxury to have a GM who who's been in the the clubhouse. Um, and Boach, obviously, who's who's been through three World Series victories. He's been through the other years in between where they didn't perform well, and he's just seen a, a whole lot of baseball. You've played on some Oakland teams that were really, really good playoff teams, teams that you know at one point uh, were you know had the best record in Major League Baseball. You know, midway through the season, best record in the American League. This is a team that hasn't been in the playoffs in six years. And so I think it took some time for the baseball world to believe in the success that you guys have had. And now it's like, Hey, the first place, Texas Rangers, first place, Texas Rangers. Is there a difference? I mean, I know the game is the same, but in terms of like mentally in the clubhouse of playing games now that there's maybe, I don't know if targets the right word, but is it, is it any different playing as a, as a front running team with the spotlight on you as opposed to a team that, maybe people aren't really thinking about well i mean it's it's june right so I, I think when you're in the in june and you're in first that's great but when you get to august september and you see teams go on these rolls like um even like oakland winning seven in a row you win seven in a row in august and september that can change that can flip the the standings you know so yeah i think us what our offense has done and and what our starting pitching has done and what the guys in the bullpen have shown, just the way we've been winning games, it's it's like, whoa, these, these dudes are scoring runs. They they've got the starting pitching. Um of course you're gonna you're gonna have that little target. But the teams I was on in Oakland, I, I think we were always chasing Houston. So it's it's a little different. I mean we were we'd be okay up until June, July. We'd make a couple moves at the deadline. 
and catch fire. Um, and that's that's the other fun part is we have the deadline coming up. So, you know, whatever we do add, I think we'll, you know, make this team even more interesting and fun to watch. Do you guys think about that? I mean, like, you guys are baseball yes. fans, right? Okay, so you – Yes. Are you <laughs> – I know you don't like to read, you know, your own press, but do you look and see, hey, like the 10 guys who could be traded and, and look to see, hey, this guy would be fun, this guy – do you – is it tough because you know that when you make these additions, some of your teammates and friends maybe are, are going to be uh, – Well, it's all hypothetical, right? Yeah. It's all hypothetical. But, yeah, I mean, yeah, there's definitely guys – there's guys in every clubhouse all the way through uh, from short season to triple A to the major league team. Like there are probably 15 GMs in every clubhouse that would go, man, like you know, <laughs> if this roster set up like this, like I remember thinking in, uh, in the minor leagues, like, okay, this is the position group that's going to be in Durham. This is the position group that's going to be in Montgomery. This is where I'm going to make the high A team this year. And these are the guys that I'm going to be with. So yeah, there's always, room to like imagine in your brain of like, okay, this guy would look really good in our bullpen. This guy would look really good fitting in the lineup here. But again, you know, like we have to win one pitch at a time. So it, the, the projections in our mind are, are fun games to play, but yeah, we have to compete. We have to dance with the girl we brought, so to say. And I, I like talking about the trade deadline, but I also understand how hard it is for a guy to come over to a new team mid season. I mean, we talk about, you know, Corey and I coming to a new team last season in the beginning as free agents and the adjustments that we had to make, you know, personally probably took me about a month and a half, two months just to figure out, you know, what I'm doing in this organization, how I'm going to do it and how, how am I going to play well? Um, so you talk about a trade deadline, you get traded immediately and that day you're in the lineup or you're in the pen closing the game or eighth inning or whatever the case may be. That's hard, especially with, you know, if it's a guy with a family or whatever, but, at the same time, as a baseball fan, we know that whoever we bring in, we are going to make them comfortable. As far as his teammate, you know, we're going to make him comfortable and say, hey, this is what we want to do, and let's play ball, and let's go win. You mentioned making adjustments, and, you know, personally and professionally, you have a family here. How have they been adjusting, and just as the Simeon family as a whole, on and off the field, what has been the biggest difference you've noticed season one versus season two? Well, last year was... You know, it was a blessing, right? We get to come here to Texas, um, you know, join join an organization who has a vision to win, right? Um, and started off slow. You know, Tara and I had to adjust a little bit just having our, our oldest in school, right? I didn't get to see him all day during the first two months of the season because they're waking up early, going to school. I'm going to the ballpark. I get home. They're already asleep for the next, you know, to get rest for the next day. Just things that I'd never dealt with in Oakland uh, from a family side that, you know, once we got into summer, I was like, okay, we took a deep breath. We said, wow, that was, that was new. Um, but now we kind of understand where we're at, what we're doing. We have two kids in school now. We've made the adjustments we need to make. We also have a, a little one on the way. So we're, we're just preparing for – you know, four children in Texas, and we, we've set our roots, so I think we, everything will be all good. He's got an infield. Almost. He's almost, almost. got an infield. Almost. And a little infield. girl Let me tell you what, though, yeah. there's no shortage of fun at the Simeon house. Like, oh, I, I, I like, believe I, it. I got to go over there at, when we played, what, Sunday? Last Sunday, right, when we played at home, I played the 1 o'clock, we had the afternoon, so I got to go be the uh, designated BP thrower while Marcus grilled. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> Let me tell you what, those boys, one afternoon with those boys, and I was worn out. But it, it, it's a good time. I've There's seen a the good pool. setup out there. At the pool, I mean, it's like jumping and cannonballs. Oh, we didn't even get close to the pool. No, I'm <laughs> saying I've seen that, like, on the road. No, no way. Oh, yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There. Oh, I mean, that that's, too, sure. Yeah. Yes, yeah. No, if I got in the pool at his house, it's over, because I'm not getting back out and sitting on the floaty 10 minutes in because I'm gassed. But, yeah, on the sport court, we had a good time. I I'm, I had some bruises for a while. <laughs> um, yeah, Josh was throwing the plastic ball at my legs because he didn't want me to hit a home run. But, yeah, we had a good time out there, man. What What's his grilling? What's the scouting report? It's pretty solid, you know. It, it was, was solid. Yeah, yeah. You can't go wrong with a couple steaks, some asparagus, and, you know, potatoes, all the good stuff. I think Tara and my mom just – put everything on the tee for me and I just yeah do it <laughs> there you go because we had the game that day I mean it was nice you know we had my mom in town we had Nate over uh it was it was a relaxing day it's kind of what we imagined when we bought the home and 
uh, just to have people over and just kick it after a game. It was probably one of the first times we had a day game. We or a, I think it was a Sunday, and we were able to come home and just you know have the evening. No travel. Right. Yeah. How excited are the boys to have a little sister? Very. I think um, Josh, our middle one, is the most excited. Um, I know Tara is excited just because the boy energy is great. It's but it can be a lot sometimes, <laughs> and we we talk to. You know, some of my teammates that have all girls and how calm it is in their house and how, and we're like, we don't know that feeling. So She's playing zone defense right now. Yeah. Right. It's four on one. Right. So, I mean, I think having that girl is just, you know, it's, I think about Tara teaching her volleyball and just, you know, being that role model for her. And, of course, the, the father-daughter relationship is something I'm looking for. So, you know, Tara, college volleyball player, Cal, stud, I was at USC when she was at Cal, and I got to broadcast oh, the wow. USC Cal match and Tara play a couple of them actually. And one She'll of be them pretty tall too. I'll save oh, some for jeans sure. for her. She's probably <laughs> taller than me. Yeah. I'm curious. We, Hannah asked Marcus about when he signed. I, I remember when it was, I think, first leaked on Twitter or whatever. Marcus signed. I think it was like hours before after USC announced that they were hiring Lincoln Riley. So it was like just this amazing day. I got my alma mater, my <laughs> team. Like I was so fired up. I was running around the house. But what do you remember about hearing that? Do you find out the same way that we all do? Is that Marcus it, got signed? Yeah. Because uh, that was the first one. That was the first domino. I want to say it was my agent. Okay. My agent was, you know, because the whole, again, like, you know, kind of sometimes play clubhouse GM and I'm like, well, okay, I'm hearing rumblings of Seeger and, you know, there's a connection in house and all this other stuff. And then I'm like, all right, well, Seeger and Simeon and then Seeger Simeon and then a couple other guys too. It's like, okay, like, you know, we're finally making the, finally making the effort to like get the core players together. So, yeah. But that was such a weird winner because I'm pretty sure like the both of them signed and then we get locked out and then it's yeah. like there's no communication with the team, um, you know. And I don't want to get in his business, a grown man with a family coming in to play on the team. Like I'm not gonna insert myself and say, hey, this is how it works, and especially in the midst of you know changing the face of the franchise because we weren't competitive for a couple of years. And yeah, like you know, bringing in new players is always exciting because aside from like seeing their game on the field, you get to fit in as a teammate, and as a friend. And yeah, it was a, uh, it was a good winner, but again, like this winner was exciting as well. And I assume this next coming winner will be exciting and yeah, we should keep the momentum rolling going from there. All right. All-star game, Seattle. Cool. Texas Rangers.com slash vote. Five right. times a day, five times a day, Please. discounted ticket offers. Uh, what would this, what would that mean to you? Marcus, you've been to one 2021. We're looking to, to check that box for you, Mr. Silver Slugger. Uh, I don't know. What, what, what would that mean for you guys to be able to go, you know, presumably with teammates? This is not a one all-star team. Uh, and Hopefully with about eight of them. I mean, it should be. It, the, the problem with being as good as this team's been is, like, now someone's going to get snubbed. Like it, just, that's, it feels like that's the way it always works. It should. That's shouldn't. how it goes, though. You know? But I think, like, this, this lineup should just come as a package. I think <laughs> I mean, so, too. <laughs> this is the thing about the All-Star game. Like, you have to have a good first two, two and a half months. And there's been players who have won Silver Sluggers who weren't All-Stars that year. That's me. Yeah. <laughs> that's um, me. There's... You know, for me in 2019, playing shortstop in the AL, I had probably the best year of my career. But I had, to, you know, the August and September of my life, and I, I didn't make the All Star team. So the All Star game is, you know, it's it's tricky because you have to have players who had a good first, you know, good start basically. And you look at our lineup; pretty much everybody has had a good start. There's guys who are getting hotter now. There'll be guys who catch fire at the end of the year. You know, so. In terms of the actual game, it's it's amazing being on the field with, you know, superstars, you know, all in the same lineup. You know, it's it's crazy. You know, you get to meet guys you only met, you know, on the bases or just in passing. And you get to be in the clubhouse and watch them work. You know, I got to watch Aaron Judge in the cage. It's something that, you know, I, I didn't think I'd be doing in the beginning of the year, watching Judge in the cage or, you know, Shohei or these guys prepare. It's it's definitely an awesome feeling. You get out there. There's a lot of festivities. There's a lot going on, and, and it's not just baseball. But in terms of this group that we have, 2023, I think we have, you know, eight guys who deserve it, like you said. Since you're both on the podcast today, okay. we're going to play a little round robin. Okay. So we'll start with you, Nathaniel. Why do you think Rangers fans should vote for Marcus for an all-star this year? 
why do I, th- like, there's no reason not to, you know, <laughs> like, I, like, I, like when we signed him, you know, it's like, okay, well, we just signed arguably the best second baseman in major league baseball, which like, you know, I, if to, if you want to take it the step past that, like I am biased towards major league baseball. I think it's the highest level of baseball on the planet. So arguably we just signed the second baseman, best second baseman in the world. So yeah, you know, the way he runs the bases, the way he goes about his defensive routine, the way he hits and provides us a chance to win every night by making plays and touching the plate. Like that's what matters. And that's something that, you know, fans see on the field and we see the all-star in the clubhouse too, as far as the work ethic, as far as showing up to post every single day, as far as giving himself a chance to play 162 every single year. Like that's something that, you know, something that needs to be recognized and something that obviously warrants a lot of votes already and will in the next couple of weeks. So yeah, vote Marcus. So Marcus, why do you think Nathaniel should be an all-star this year in Seattle? Thank you. First of all, <laughs> <laughs> he's a top bat in the American league at first base period. Um, silver reigning silver slugger award winner. He deserves to be in. I think that you, you hit third in a lineup that, is the top offense in the game. Yes, Tampa's doing some good things. I'm biased. I watch our guys play every single day. He's hitting third, driving everybody in. He has the most power in in the lineup. Yes, he, he wants to hit, have 20 by now, but I think that watching him work and watching him prepare and what he knows about the swing and how he goes out every night and you know puts it all together is, is amazing. And he's still young in his career, too. So it's just – it's been – an honor to work with Nate and play with him on the right side, and I think we both deserve to be there. Uh, when you step in the box every time, you try to do what? You try to get a good pitch to hit. Or you try to get a hit, right? Yeah. I mean, I, yeah, I know that we can get into the well, process. I'll try and hit the ball hard. Okay, yeah. Try to hit the ball hey, hard. I'm yeah, trying to do something well, here, no, man. No, listen to me now, because, like, yeah, with all this voting stuff, too, like, at the same side, it's like, uh, I, I see it, you know, as much as I don't want to, I see it. And then every social media post I'm tagged in, and then, like, uh, the hostess that came in the other day from the network, the MLB network was like, Hey, you know, you're fourth on the voting list. I'm like, well, what voting list, you know? So uh, it's tough in this situation, not having been there before trying not to press to play a really hard game because when you get results oriented instead of process oriented, the game like feels like for me anyway, feels like it all collapses. So I have to do a really good job this next couple of weeks of making sure that I'm doing the tiniest things correctly. And then the big things will work the way they're supposed to. I was just going to say that you lead all American league first baseman in hits, <laughs> oh, but, but thank you. I mean, yeah, <laughs> I appreciate that. I'll take uh, that too. What, what would this mean to you with the, you know, the fact that this would be a first for you? Um, I don't know. You know, that like my, my thing has never been fan interaction. Um, up until this point, you know, obviously like my, my brother's a first rounder and I get picked in the rest of the pack. Like, um, I, you know, I, based on playing well and not on prospect status, I got to do the futures game in the minor leagues, but that wasn't because I had clout from being a draft pick or having these 80 grade tools. And, you know, I, I don't have a huge social media following. I don't have, you know, Twitter interactions or things like that. Um, so yeah, to have the public, push for me and and get some get some validation from the baseball fan instead of like instead of the staff like don't get me wrong I think that the silver slugger is awesome and it's cool because the vote comes from the staff and from the people at ground level which is you know the opinion that matters but the all-star game is such a fan interaction thing that it would be totally new for me to get a fan following and get the votes that I need and obviously put together the performance on the field to give myself a chance to get there. So it'd be great. You know, I, I, but again, like one pitch at a time. Well, I think that starting in the all-star game is the fans, but the rest, like the, the rest of the all-star t- team, the way they put it together is from the, your peers, your peers, we get to vote. Um, and I know you have all the respect from all your peers. So, I think we do have the fan support, especially this year. You look at the stands every single night; it's packed, and they talk about voting, and people look at the screen. And, yeah, that's been great, um, by the way. The full, stand, ho- I, the full house in the midweek. That's yeah, been awesome. I mean, I, I was fortunate enough to play in Toronto, where there was an entire country voting, and we had guys playing <laughs> yeah. well. Similar to this, the way this offense is rolling, we were rolling. I think, you know, the way that the fans came through with the votes, you know, that's great. We had, I think, we had four guys make it. Two guys were able to start. 
Um, but the the league knows. I mean, we all as players know, and everybody takes it serious. So that's a, definitely a fun thing to be a part of when we get to vote too. You mentioned your 2021 All Star experience earlier on in the episode. What is one way that that shaped you as a player to where you are now? Well, I think that me switching over to second base was, you know, just kind of a whole new beginning to my career where, you know, I think you look around the league, at second base is not a position where you have as many guys playing every day and hitting for power and, you know, doing the things that a lot of the shortstops were doing in the AL. Um, so it's cool for me. I've been – I love playing second base now. I love being able to, you know, be at the top of the lineup, score a bunch of runs, try and fill up the stat sheet so it equals a win. You know, that's the that's the way I think about it. That's why I play every single day, to win. But there's things that you can do, you know, scoring runs, like I always talk about. That means you're doing a lot of th- different things right, taking away runs. That means you're doing a lot of different things right on defense. So – I try and keep it simple, and you know, at the end of the day, you look at it and you say, wow, I, I had a good year at second base. There are two players in Major League Baseball that have scored at least 100 runs in each of the last three full seasons, right? 2020, not a full season. Freddie Freeman and Marcus Simeon. That's, you know, in terms of run scoring. Uh, he's done this as well as anyone in baseball. Um, all right. We're going to talk hoop in a second. First, though, our friends at Whataburger want to let you know that uh, if you like burgers and breakfast, you can combine those two with the Whataburger breakfast burger, a fresh 100% beef patty, melted cheese, hash brown sticks, fresh cracked egg, bacon, and creamy pepper sauce. It's only available, though, from 11 p.m. until 11 a.m. and only for a limited time. Uh, I'm doing intermittent fasting, so Good luck. having to read that is not a... I'm still waiting on my intermittent that won't work for invite you. to read that. You know, Do you want to read that? Here, yeah, I got one ready no, for you. No, no, one of these days, okay. I'm going to read an ad. Okay. I'm okay. Ready. Yeah. You let right. us know. Yeah. You can tell me I'm a host, you don't, but I haven't read an ad yet. No, we don't make the guests read. The no, ads. no, no. You don't like inter- intermittent fasting. I mean, I don't think that works for you. You're you're you playing a sport right. every day. We have a couple people in the clubhouse who do it. Um, that's that's where I got it from. And these guys are starving when it's time to eat. It's like. <laughs> Like, just eat normal. Right? Yeah, but I don't get to play... Pound calories. I don't get to play every day. Eat everything you can. I don't know, because then I'm... Oh, yeah, not you. I, Sorry. Yeah, yeah. But I, I can't say, that. like, Regan, one of our trainers, Regan Wong, dude's in shape. He's like, a healthy guy. Right. He's I mean, a healthy... Well, yeah, but he also... He's not... Dude, he, he crushes it in the gym. Yeah. Yeah, he crushes it in he the gym. He crushes it in the kitchen when he's starving, too. He does yeah. a good job in the kitchen, does a good job in the training room. Regan Wong's a healthy guy, but... He's not on the field. Yeah. I'm not doing that while I'm playing. Right. No, no, I that's would never. Yeah, you guys all. can't do Maybe that. Maybe for quality of life after playing, you know, you know, take it easy on your knees and your back and cut well, a couple pounds. And yeah. Yeah. But as far as 162, you got to keep that weight on as long as you can. So I love playing basketball. I play basketball three times a week. And okay. that's like what for me, if I get I don't want to like lose myself. Yeah. Right. Like I just in general, but I'm not very tall. And so if I get a little extra poundage, like Uh-oh. it hurts the knees and the back a little more. Ah. But so I got to I got to stay, you know, I got to be a very average pickup basketball player. It's very important to me. <laughs> what's so the strength the of your, per- yeah, what's the strength of your game? <laughs> Let's hear I, that. I, uh, the people want to know. I was a, I was a pass first point guard in high school. Pass first. All right. Point. All conference. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, good defender. Good th- uh, three point shooter. You hustle. Three and uh, yeah, D. dude, I was absolutely you a hustler. Hustle. Yeah, I would say three and D, but like I, I could guard guards, right? Like I'm yeah. not guarding. I'd get switched on a lot and had to really work on recovering or, or you know, just trying to be competitive in the post. But good passer, I yes, I was. I would get under people's skin. I was a little you pinch s. Do you oh, I elbow. elbows. You know, yeah. Oh if someone tried to back me down. They were getting stuff. I, I was taught. My coach was really good about teaching me how to Grab keep it. it. Yeah. I've seen it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I have to, though. I'm not, I'm not as naturally athletic. And uh, I was a good dunker. I mean, I just... Dunker? Threw, no, never. <laughs> uh, all right. So we've talked hoops, Marcus. I think the first thing we really connected on last year was talking about Golden State. You played Northern California, uh, and you played against... Let's start with this. You played against Damian Lillard? Yeah. Well, what was I that like? I played against... Um, yeah, so JV, you know, my high school, St. Mary's, played against St. Joe's, and Damian Lillard was a freshman there coming off the bench. Like, this dude wasn't even getting playing time. And I'm like, this dude can shoot a little bit, really athletic. 
he ends up leaving St. Joe's. He goes to Oakland High School the next year. He's starting. He's the best player in Oakland. Um, and we played at Cal, the college I ended up going to, and we lost on a Damian Lillard three-pointer at the buzzer like he does in the NBA now. So just seeing that, and I think I had fouled out or something. like. So I was on the sideline. I watched him game-winning three from, like, NBA range to beat us. And I um, also got to play against Drew Holiday in the state finals. He's Campbell Hall? Campbell Hall, yeah. Drew and Justin. Yeah. And there was a lot of good players, you know, at that time. I think those were the only NBA players I played against. Drew was at UCLA when we were right. at, you know, when you were at Cal and I was at USC doing laundry for the baseball team. I sat in the stands and watched Jalen Brown dominate our the team. Cal Bear. Yeah, they, yeah. How about we that? have a Wheeler High School, right? right. But he, apparently, he was in the magnet program, like actually in the magnet program. Oh, he's really crazy. bright. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. like engineering and all that good stuff, like where you're taking like calculus one and two in high school, that whole thing. Oh, my mom went. <laughs> my mom went to high school there, right? And then they turned into a magnet school later. But yeah, their math and science apparently is like through the roof. And then the basketball team was always just really good because if you're in the magnet program you can recruit yeah <laughs> so yeah, yeah Cal that year <laughs> had Ivan Rapp he went to Bishop O'Dowd yeah. he was top player in the maybe in the state at the time somehow they convinced Jalen Brown to come to Cal you know usually a kid from Atlanta Georgia area does not go all the way west to Cal but Quanzo Martin the the head mm-hmm. coach Ivan Rapp they got them together and I was I think I was playing for the A's at the time so we got to go watch them play at Berkeley and you know, they both went one and done, but pretty cool year. Yeah. What, what is what does basketball mean to you either as an outlet, as a fan now, or just your experiences growing up? I mean, you, you love basketball, right? What is it? How would you describe your relationship or, or the significance of basketball in your life? Well, basketball was the first sport I played. You know, I think I was maybe five years old. Um you know, I played all the way until senior year of high school, played on very competitive teams. I think that my dad always told me, he said, I can't wait till you stop playing basketball. He loved basketball, but he couldn't wait till I stopped so I could focus on baseball because I didn't put all my eggs into baseball as a young you know, high school kid. So once I stopped, got to Cal, no more basketball, I think baseball got better and better. So it was almost a blessing in disguise, but I have – all my best friends in high school were on the basketball team. Not, you know, my best friend to this day was on the baseball team. But in terms of the people I hung out with most of the time in high school, it was the basketball team. And, you know, we were really good. We were a small team that pressed the entire game. So we all got in really good shape. Um, we got to go to state. We got to go to state senior year, 31 and 1, showed up, lost to Drew Holiday. And that was it for me for basketball. My embarrassing basketball story is you I obviously played never played. I never played. What? I was a dancer, although I'm uh, about 5'12 right. now. I never played basketball. <laughs> 12. But when I was in middle school, that was like the peak of Yao Ming. Oof. My last name is Wing. Oh, and no. the boy that I had a crush no. on started calling me Yao Wing, and no. it stuck up until college. <laughs> Mortified. And now you're married. And now I'm married, and my last name is oh, not hey, Wing. By but the way. This is our first episode with her since she got married. Congratulations. Wow. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Thanks you for holding it down when I was gone. Yeah. I was yeah. in St. Lucia. I was like, do I phone in? How does this work? But you guys did a great oh, job. I listened to it when I was on the beach. Yeah, you need to so. enjoy it. But yeah, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Right. Uh, all right, Father's Day coming up. Sunday, right? This yep. Sunday? That's Wednesday. Yeah, this Sunday. I think the game sold out, too, for Father's Day. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's amazing. I thought this whole weekend sold out. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I think it is. Yeah, yeah. Let's go. Um, Big crowds. Yes. And, and also, yeah, shout out to the fans, right? 25,000 on a Monday and a Tuesday. Awesome. It's been a long time since we've had that. I yeah. think so 21 tonight. 21 tonight? Let's I think 21-7 maybe. 21-7. Let's wow. do more than and that. Then, and then, yeah, tomorrow's going to be a big one too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, all right, so Father's Day. Let's start with you, sir. Okay. Uh, your father was drafted fifth round by the Correct. Mariners. Yes. But chose to... Pursue a, a, a life and career in the Naval Academy. Yep. I imagine you guys have had a lot of conversations about that and where his head was at and why he chose what he chose and all of that. I, what are the takeaways from you or takeaways you've had from those conversations that have maybe helped shape you or influence you? Um, at one point, like, it, like at that point in his life, he was just like directed to or chose like 
discipline, you know, because like, yeah, growing up in a beach town, like with a brother and two sisters. And then uh, my grandfather was the principal at the high school that they worked at. And my grandmother worked for the school district. Like, you know, you, you kind of get away with murder at that point. Not actually, but, yeah. you know, and um, everybody knows everybody. You know, obviously there's no cell phones and that whole thing. So you're living life and kind of running up and down the coast and doing what you want. But, um, yeah, at that point, he felt the calling for him was to live like in a more disciplined fashion. And he thought that he wanted to be an astronaut when he first went to the Naval Academy and you know, he's too tall and all that other stuff. And he tells me he didn't want to do his homework. And, and you know, every time I would talk to him about schoolwork, he's like, yeah, well, remember I took calc two with a, a not a graphing calculator, the other hardcore calculator, right? <laughs> an abacus. Um, yeah, sure. An abacus. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, like he, he played football and baseball there, and so his hands were full uh, with the athlete schedule. And then, um, you know, anytime you spend time in the service academy, like they're beating discipline into you, and you're doing so many push ups, you can't see straight, and all this other stuff. So, yeah, that was just how things worked out for him. And then, uh, obviously, I wouldn't be here without him making the choice that he made. So, I appreciate that for him. And he's obviously had a, a fantastic career in the military and now in the defense industry. And, uh, yeah, he's, he's done such a good job of given Josh and myself examples, being a role model and, and, uh, you know, being disciplined into us too. And, you know, that's, that's where we're at now. Speaking of being a fatherly role model, Marcus, you have three sons and you're about to have your daughter, which is so exciting for the more Simeon family. But as a father, what example do you hope to set for your kids? Well, you know, it's never going to be perfect. First of all, I think that for me, I've always tried to be reliable, loyal, um, and just somebody that they can lean on and somebody that loves them. I think that everybody deserves to be loved. Um, not everybody is fortunate enough to have their dad around in the house. Um, for, for my sons, yes, in baseball, we're gone, you know, from spring till the fall, we're gone half the time unless they make the road trip. Right. So there's times where, you know, I'm I'm missing their games. I'm missing things at school, things that you know I wish I could be at. And I'm I'm very lucky to have FaceTime and video and these things that you know where you know I can at least see it. Um, I think about my dad. My dad was 19 when I was born. My dad was a freshman at Cal trying to play receiver for the football team. And just think about my experience as a father and you know him being 19. I, you know, when I was 19, there's probably no way I would have been able to do that. Um, so just, you know, learning from things that he's passed on to me, you know, whether it's long drives in the car when he's dropping me up back off to my mom's house or just he always made sure to give me little, little nuggets every single possible time he could. And, you know, I think that that's important and that's something he learned from his father. So it's just kind of a generational thing that you try and keep going and, and make sure that they're loved. How cool is it? I remember Michael Young told me towards the end of his career that his oldest son was starting to not just see him play, but like knew it, knew that his dad was, you know, a major league baseball player. And uh, then when he got inducted in, or when his jersey was retired, he, he thought it was really special that all of his kids were now old enough to see dad and, and know that, hey, you know, dad tells all these stories, but he actually did play. Your sons are young, but uh, I, I think at least. Uh, your two oldest are aware that they're watching dad play. I don't know if uh, is Eli the youngest. Eli. Yeah, I don't know if he's I'm, – I'm sure he knows. I don't know if he'll have the memories. But what's it like for you knowing that they're going to watch you play? Like they're Because a lot of guys have kids at the end of their career, and their kids are like three when they retire. So I think, I think it was uh, Sunday in Tampa. So they made the trip to Tampa. And usually, you know, when they come to the games here, there's child care. There's things that – Chris Young and, and Ray Davis, and they, they provided for, for us so our, our wives can enjoy the game. But on the road, they're watching all nine innings. So I had a good view of kind of where the family section was and where my family was. And I look up, and Isaiah's just sitting there with his hands <laughs> like this watching every single movement. And it just made me so happy just to – to know that he loves the game I love. And I think Joshua, he's he's still younger, but all he wants to do is hit at home. They, that's all they want to do. So just knowing that. I can vouch. <laughs> yeah, 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 your arm. Just yeah. knowing You're that my, tired. Yes. my sons love what I love, that makes it 
so much easier for me to kind of show them different things and hopefully, you know, hey, if you don't become a professional baseball player, that's not the end of the world. But if it's something that they want to do, they have the, the perfect example of somebody who's been through it, gone through the ups and downs and, and their mom was a pro athlete as well. So, you know, there's, there's a lot of things that we can kind of help them with, maybe things that we may have failed at that, you know, they won't. Do you have any fun plans for Father's Day this year? Well, we got to get on a flight, I'm pretty sure, right? Yeah. yeah. So, you know, I think in the morning, you might have to ask Tara that question because <laughs> okay. that's, that's our day. I'll try and find her. Um, I just want to spend time with them and, and be there with them. That's as a baseball player, a lot of times you miss Father's Day with your own dad or, or Mother's Day with your own mom. But now as a, a father myself, you know, we get to be with our kids and, you know, hopefully we get some time in that morning. Do you, I don't want to get you in trouble by asking this, but do you ever think about, you know, hey, like I can't wait to, you see Marcus with his kids and like I can't wait to not throw batting practice for 15 hours, but to, to have the impact on someone that, you know, your dad's had on you? Yeah, of course. You know, like, yeah, of course I want a family. You know, like having a wife and kids would be great. But, you know, it's not it's not up to me when the timing of that is. It, it'll work out when it's exactly when it's supposed to work out. So, yeah, I'm not in a rush, you know. I definitely, um, you know, see the work that it takes to be a father and be a full-time committed father because if, if, if I'm going to go for it, you know, I, I don't want to do a bad job. Um, but, yeah, when the, when the timing's right, I'll be excited to be a dad. And, yeah, because, you know, Coming home to a dog is one thing, like you know. It, that's, that's what I'm saying. So this is a new experience for me. Like, right? Like, Brenda's got a dog. So like, if I go hang out with the dog, I'm like, gosh, like, there's an emotional investment from the dog, and he loves me, and it's hilarious now because I'm realizing that I'm the favorite, and I think she's realized oh, that man. I'm the favorite. Mm. And then Marcus had said it to me before. He's like, man, just wait till it's a kid. Like, wait, wait till you're coming home to a human. And yeah, the, that the idea of that's very exciting. But again, like it, it'll work out when it's supposed to. Until that time, Funkel Nate's on duty. That's it. I think it makes those zero for fours with two strikeouts. It it makes you be able to flush it immediately, almost when you get to come home to your to your kids and they give you a hug and they don't know what you did. You know, they, they don't, don't care. care. Yeah. You know, so those are the things I've noticed. You know, our first born was uh in 2016 right so my whole baseball career from that point on till he was born was you know just dealing with failure in a different way and just kind of letting it eat away at you a little bit longer and when you when you come home and you have people who who love you and hold and and hug you and want to go play and they don't care about baseball it's like wow it's not what it really was about whenever they're out at bp they are just the cutest little kids ever they're adorable Mm. They are. You know, we, we made some, some handsome young men. <laughs> <laughs> Can't wait to see what the little girl looks like. You know, it's, you know, it's, it's she's, definitely a blessing. She's got three security guards uh, no protecting her. Yeah. Five. Oh, okay, yeah. I'm just thinking, I'm just about the brother, you know. Uh, all right, we got fan questions quickly, and then we'll wrap it up. But first, uh, a little message from Whataburger. Spend Father's Day at Whataburger because Whataburger is spicing things up with an entree unlike any other. The Buffalo Ranch Chicken Salad with crispy bacon, blue cheese, and Whataburger's one-of-a-kind buffalo sauce. Try it with grilled chicken, a Whata Chicken Filet, or spicy chicken filet today. Available for a limited time. All right, fan questions. Uh, we got Instagram coming up uh, from Hannah. I got some of the Twitter questions. We'll start with Natalie. Wants to know, what is each of your favorite Taylor, uh, Taylor Swift song? Ooh. I can't even, I don't even know. <laughs> I think we went over this in, uh, was that here? <laughs> yes, question the, of the day. Did Ooh. I know one? I think I pulled up a roster for you guys so you kind of see like the little song list. Yeah, can I can I pull it up now. Yeah. Video. Can you I go first, that? Nate. I'm so sorry, Natalie. I, and like, <laughs> I, I, you know, like I love music, right? I love all kinds of music. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I feel like she's come out with some stuff recently that I'm not crazy about. Um, and I'll write I mean, you've heard name. a bunch of these. You just obviously don't. Yeah, yeah. blank space. This is Taylor Swift. Okay, let's roll through here. Um. <laughs> I don't have one, Natalie. <laughs> I don't have one. Right. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Okay, guilty. Then here, substitute. <laughs> guilty, pl- uh, guilty pleasure artist or song. That's like. I always go with Usher. Usher? <laughs> like old, like original Usher? Usher? Yes, Usher. Uh, 
you know, I, I enjoy like you make me wanna, yeah, yeah, all those okay. songs. Like, um, you know what, a guilty pleasure song that came on the other day. Gosh, I think it was it was at the pool in the off day. It was um, Domino by Jesse J. Jesse, yeah, oh, that's, yeah, a yeah. that's a good one. Banger, yeah, yeah sorry. big fan. Yep. Um, all right, and then the last Twitter question. This comes from David. He just wants to know what is a typical uh, day off. Look like for you guys? Do you mow the grass? Chores? What's the what's like a typical day off for you in season? In season at home, day off at home for me is wake up, make my kids breakfast. What do you make? Um, depends. Like waffles. You know, I think you can't go wrong with like a bagel sandwich with the yeah. egg on it. Okay. You know. Um, then brush my teeth, get myself together, <laughs> <laughs> and then make myself some breakfast. I think most of the time we try and spend the off day outside. It does get a little hot out here, but I want to make sure that we get, you know, just a fun day outside. Eventually, as they get older, maybe some golf, because I know that might be an answer for someone else. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just family time for me. Yes, golf. Yeah. Absolutely yeah. golf. Yeah, golf, <laughs> nap, and then uh, dinner. Yeah. I like to go out, like, usually off days or date nights, and, yeah. I But with it being so hot, um, I got to golf as early as I can, take my nap early as I can. If we're at dinner by, like, like the, the blue hair special, you know? You're all the people are yeah. there, 5.30 dinner, and we're done by 7.30. Like, it's a good day. Give me it's your giving U- spring training vibes. Yes. Yeah. yes. Give, give me your U.S. Open pick. Kepka. Okay. All right. Yeah. Kepka. Uh, and then before we go to Instagram, we always do this with Nathaniel. We always, there's like a challenge. And if it happens, he's got to do something. Uh, so oh, here's, yeah. here's the, we, we're over on the season. We're going to, we're going to get this one tonight though. If you guys each hit a home run tonight, then you have to come back sometime post all-star break and be back on the show. You can do that. All right, cool. Deal. Okay. Love it. Deal. Speaking of the kitchen, what are y'all's go-to pregame meals? Mm, I've been changing it up. I think, um... I try and keep it carb heavy. We have like, it's weird, but there's like these little oatmeal things. And um, I stick with Ed. Shout out to Ed. He's He's got an entire menu of things that he can make for us. That's and, one of our chefs, by the way. Yes, the, shout the, out Ed. The chefs are so good. They've, they've done such a good job of like, there's a cook to order menu, there's a buffet menu. And then it's if, the big leagues. If, yeah, as long as you ask, you can get just about whatever you want made for you, like on the stovetop. And the kitchen staff does such a good job. They're great. Final question. Who is the funniest guy in the Rangers clubhouse? Mm, we got a couple. I think Adolis. Don't sleep on Adolis. Um, and Nate knows because Nate understands a lot of Spanish that maybe I don't. And he's like, if this dude was saying all this in English, <laughs> we would die. We would die. He's such a, he's such a bully. Like, think, like a nice bully, but like he is not afraid to rag on, on a lot of guys. <laughs> so Adolis, Brad is hilarious to me. Like he's, He's been around. We we got drafted the same year, so he's seen a lot of baseball. He just has so many funny things, like whether it's baseball or not, and it just cracks me up. You know who's coming out of his shell too is Josh Smith. Josh oh, Smith is. is Josh Smith is sneaking into one of the better bench presences, which is hard. You know, sitting mm-hmm. on the bench is hard. He's having a good time in there. Right? Funny. <laughs> he's he's funny. Do you guys notice? You guys do some funny stuff on the video board right before the game. You know, when you guys are doing your handshakes and whatnot, and they show you. I know sometimes you look up like you ducked the other day when you, but do you notice that? Because I get a kick. That's like it's must so watch. so funny. Yeah. That's to me the best thing on the video board every game is just seeing some of the funny Thanks, stuff. Thanks, Jared. Thank yeah, you. you. Sorry. <laughs> I apologize. I apologize. <laughs> Other than when <laughs> Hannah's on the video board. Yeah, I'm kidding. You know, I'm yeah. kidding. Like, I don't know. Sometimes, sometimes having the camera stuck in your face, like when you, when you're trying to get ready to play, like, I, you know, it's one, of, it's one of those things, yeah. but yeah, I, I, was telling Smitty yesterday he's going to get fined for you know getting something yes, on the yeah. getting something on the camera yeah yeah, um, yeah. What you know it's, it's just he's like, having a right good time he's, yeah he's just getting yeah. ready for the game that's all but yeah there's certain things you can and can't do on camera certain mm. things you, you know that that the camera guys need to make sure to stay away from but it's it's they, funny when they catch it they, they, <laughs> they, 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 they cut away so they cut away right away right once away. they noticed yes. it but uh so not yes. uh, didn't pull, pull so far i mean yeah i've got screenshot my uncle sent me screenshots of me with a finger in my nose like, <laughs> you, like yeah you name it if, if you do it and it's not hidden in the dugout like you'll be caught be prepared to get yeah. caught well fellas thanks so much for for joining marcus it was awesome having you on thank you for uh for joining thanks for having me nathaniel 
You got a uh, you got a big managerial. So you're gonna be a player manager tonight. Go get him. Yes, Pete Rose esque. There. Oh, okay. No, maybe not that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> interesting comparison, maybe but we'll take it. Maybe not uh, that. Marcus, maybe. go get him tonight as well. Hannah. Thank you. This was awesome. You, you can be the best thing on the video board tonight. It's okay. I'll I just, try. I stuck my foot in my nothing, mouth. That's okay. It happens. Uh, for, I Marcus, you. for Marcus, Nathaniel, Hannah, Tim, and the rest of the crew, Jared Sandler, thanking you for joining us for another episode of the Straight Up Texas podcast. <laughs>